But one of the things you and I were talking about in the makeup chairs a few minutes ago was you and I have been talking about this for 18, 19 yeah, years. Yeah, <laughs> like exactly. that. And now people seem to be listening finally. It's, yeah. getting, it's getting frequent enough. Now, back then, when we first started talking about this, you remember people saying, oh, well, people are just talking about it more now. Yeah. It's always been around. Exactly. Exactly. You, is, are you I agree do, with me? I'm I asking, and, I'm, and you were shaking your head vigorously. Yeah. I'm going to ask you the same question in just a second, but Todd, first, yeah. do you agree that this is something that is becoming of epidemic proportion and it's growing? I think that it's it has always been around, but it's becoming larger than ever now because the internet has changed the whole the whole game of it. I think mm -hmm. it has given uh, pedophiles the opportunity to do things more than they've been able to. It was a very powerful night. We just um, <clears throat> passed uh, Frances McDormand at the, uh, at the photos, and she said, what a, what a night to be in that room. And um, it does feel like a very, very historic night. And uh, Oprah captured it <laughs> incredibly well. Um, yeah, it was powerful. For too long, women have not been heard or believed if they dared to speak their truth to the power of those men but their time is up. It was the main event in a different type of award show for Hollywood, one where activism became the accessory to vote. A sea of black dress reflecting the tidal wave shift of the Me Too and Time's Up movement. When James Franco won a Golden Globe Award Sunday, he was wearing a Time's Up pin, promoting a new campaign to fight sexual harassment and gender discrimination. But following his win, a number of women went on social media to accuse him of sexual misconduct. James Franco sure looks uncomfortable. But I wanted to ask you about some criticism that you got on a Golden Globes night. I can't, the way I live my life, I can't live if, if there's restitution to be made. I will, I will make it. Um, so, if I've done something wrong, I, I will fix it. I, I have to. I completely support people coming out and being able to have a voice because I didn't have a voice for so long. So, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, shut them down in any way. It's, it's I think, a, a, a good thing and I support it. This morning, the New York Times announcing it has canceled a panel discussion with Franco because of these allegations. By the but way, my thing is this: it's not just Hollywood's dirty little secret; it's the world's dirty little secret. This is something that's been going on not just in Hollywood but everywhere. People are afraid to talk about it. The Me Too campaign has shone a light on the world of sexual harassment in the entertainment industry here in Australia, and in Hollywood and right around the world. Corey Feldman was a child superstar of the 1980s who says child abuse and pedophilia rings operate in the entertainment industry. Whether he was playing Mouth in Goonies. First you gotta do the truffle shuffle. Teddy in Stand By Me. Oh, Gordy just screwed the food. <laughs> or starring alongside his best mate, Corey Heyman Lost Boys. Corey Feldman looked like he had it all. But according to Corey, beneath all the fame and fortune lies a sinister tale of abuse, drugs and pedophilia deep in the underbelly of 1980s Hollywood. I like to think of myself more as a child slave. I will ask you the same question, though. You, you were shaking your head vigorously when I was talking to Todd about being Hollywood's dirty little secret. Do you think it is? I do think it is. Mm -hmm. um, I think I, I agree with Todd that I think it is, it is a bigger picture, that we've seen that in the athletic world just recently. But I think Hollywood in particular has, has a real problem that no one has talked about. They covered it up for a long time, and it's just now coming to light, maybe in the last four years, I'd say, we've had quite a lot of convictions, so it's starting to look like a trend. Corey went to school like any normal kid, but as his fame grew in Hollywood, his popularity in the playground took a nosedive. Because I had to be picked up early from school all the time, kids thought that I felt that I must be special. With his life a mess, Corey turned to Hollywood. The closest thing I remember to having as confidants or friends were directors and producers of commercials that would come to me and say, hey, you're all right, kid. Why do you seem so unhappy? Why are you so miserable to be here? And I'd be like, no, no, I'm happy to be here. Trust me, because if not, I'd be at home, and home is much worse. It's an unspoken code, just like the unspoken code that if you hear that somebody's being molested, you look the other way. The LA Times this morning has just published an article in which five women accuse actor James Franco of sexual misconduct. Four were his students and another said he was her mentor. 
including actress Ali Sheedy, who in a now deleted tweet appeared to write, James Franco just won. Please never ever ask me why I left the film TV business. I have no idea what I did to Ali Sheedy. I directed her in a, a play off Broadway. I had nothing but a great time with her. Uh, 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 total respect for her. And actress Violet Paley, who tweeted, cute time's up, Penn, James Franco. Who tweeted that Franco pushed her head down in a car towards his exposed groin. One woman says while she and three other women filmed a nude scene with Franco three years ago, he removed protective plastic guards covering other actresses' genitals. Two other student actresses also recounted negative onset experiences. Both said Franco became angry when none of the women, while at a shoot, would agree to be topless. The Golden Globes. So I want all the girls watching here and now to know that a new day is on the horizon. You live in Los Angeles, which has been the center of the Harvey Weinstein allegations. Mm. Since then, the number of men accused of sexual harassment or sexual assault has been staggering. There have been journalists accused, authors, TV personalities, producers. Have you come across a lot of this behavior in the music industry? I haven't come across it, but then uh, that's not to say that it doesn't exist. Um, it's very different, the, the movie industry. You know, people have or, or often asked me, why don't you act? You know, you'd be a really good actor. And you know, my case response has always been, oh, no, 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 I don't have passion for it. You know, and, and therefore I wouldn't be good at it. it well, okay, hashtag real talk, talk for a second. Um, if I wanted to act, I could kill it. I know I could be a really good actor. I don't know if I could be a great actor, but I'd be a really good actor because it's essentially what you do when you sing. But I've never wanted to do it because of the lack of control of my own destiny. There's a, such a great power imbalance. There are these few people that wield all this power. I think it's great that it's all coming out in the open. And when that new day finally dawns, it will be because of a lot of magnificent women, many of whom are right here in this room tonight, and some pretty phenomenal men fighting hard to make sure that they become the leaders who take us to the time when nobody ever has to say, me too, again. Rousing words, optimistic words, perhaps a candidate's words? The hashtag Oprah 2020 trending overnight, some tweeting how Oprah's words gave them hope for the future, a sense of inclusiveness.
Speaking your truth is the most powerful tool we all have. Last night at the Golden Globe. I'm wearing black with a bit of um, um, color for hope, I don't know. <laughs> a little phoenix rising from the ashes, I don't know. Um, but mostly black. I was proud to, do, to, to wear black with um, every other man and woman who are here uh, tonight on the car. But while Corey had found solace in some friends, there was also many wanting to do him harm. I hung out with him for years. Years. We were close friends. Beneath this child actor's cheeky smile and brash attitude was a victim of an alleged pedophile ring. He tried something on me and I kind of came to in the middle of it and said, uh, no, I can't do this. But this was already happening to me with another man. So I initially, when it happened, I recognized that he had already been communicating with the other guy and the other guy told him exactly how he would get to me which is by drugging me, getting me drunk, and to the point where I was inebriated and I couldn't defend myself, and then I would pass out. And then once I passed out, that's when they would come in for the kill. And 24 hours later, we got a call from the Today Show like superheroes. They said, we're gonna save you. I get to the Today Show, and the guy to interview me is Matt Lauer. And Matt Lauer basically does everything he can to discredit me, and sits there and basically shames me for the fact that I'm fighting this fight. In all fairness, though, we've been down this road before with you, and you have promised Never. in the past to name names. Never. In your book, you said, you, when you were talking about your book, you said you were going to blow the lid and off this. is of why this. I'm doing this, because when I wrote my book, the publishers prevented me from writing the names well, down. That's what I meant by they we were down this road before. Yeah. And just a month and a half later, karma comes back, bites them in the ass. Dear colleagues, on Monday night, we received a detailed complaint from a colleague about inappropriate sexual behavior in the workplace by Matt Lauer. It represented, after serious review, a clear violation of our company's standards. As a result, we have decided to terminate his employment. The whole point of this is not just about making a movie, it's about making a stand. It's about standing up. And the biggest disappointment for me is that really nobody from the Hollywood community has said, we're going to stand with you. I'm only one man. I can only speak on what I know for sure. And what I know for sure is that Hollywood protects a group of pedophiles who are still working within our industry. Now. I'm sure there's much more famous and renowned ones that I don't even know about because I see them coming out on the news every day. But the ones I do know about, the only way that I can be helpful is to tell my story without any barriers put upon me. Women started tweeting sexual accusations against him in the last couple of days after he wore a Time's Up pin and won a Golden Globe on Sunday. The things that I heard that were on Twitter um, are not accurate. Um, but I completely support people coming out and being able to have a voice because I didn't have a voice for so long. So I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, shut them down in any way. It's, it's, I think, a, a, a good thing and I support it. By the way. My thing is this, it's not just Hollywood's dirty little secret, it's the world's dirty little secret. This is something that's been going on, not just in Hollywood, but everywhere. People are afraid to talk about it. But you know, I really think it has a lot to do with 
how you approach your children, you know. With his life a mess, Corey turned to Hollywood. The closest thing I remember to having as confidants or friends were directors and producers of commercials. Gonna make a change for once in my life. Among these role models was the late Michael Jackson. Michael understood all my pain because he was going through the same thing. We'd be driving in the car, specifically one time when we were coming back from Disneyland, and I looked in the mirror and I had zits all over my face and I was like, oh, I'm so ugly. He said, don't ever say that you're ugly. And I said, but I am, I look terrible, it's disgusting. And he said, you're not disgusting. Don't ever say that about yourself. He taught me about self-love, which is the most important gift that anyone can give you, is learning how to love yourself again. Did Michael Jackson save your life? In many ways, yeah, in many ways. I mean, he'd certainly saved my soul.